welcome back, my friends, to the Godfather of Fitness, Jack O'Lane story part two. And we will begin with Lelane published several books and videos on fitness and nutrition. He appeared in movies and recorded a song with Connie Haynes. He marketed exercise equipment, a range of vitamin supplements, and two models of electric juicers. These included the Juice Tiger and the Jack Lelane Power Juicer. Lelane celebrated his 95th birthday with the release of a new book titled Live Young Forever. In the book, he discussed how he maintained his health and activeness well into his advanced age. Lelane blamed overly processed foods for many health problems. For most of his life, Jack was mostly vegetarian while including fish in his evening meals. In his later, in his later years, he mostly had a meatless diet that included fish and took vitamin supplements. He ate two meals a day and, and avoided snacks. His breakfast after working out for two hours consisted of hard-boiled egg whites, a cup of broth, oatmeal with soy milk, and seasonal fruit. For dinner, he and his wife typically ate raw vegetables, egg whites, and fish. He did not drink coffee. Lelaine said his two simple rules of nutrition are, if man made it, don't eat it, and if it tastes good, spit it out. When exercising, Lelaine worked out repetitively with weights until he experienced muscle fatigue in whatever muscle groups he was exercising or when it became impossible for him to go on with a particular routine. This is now a common practice and is most often referred to as training to failure. Lelaine moved from exercise to exercise without stopping. To contradict critics who thought this would leave him tightly muscle-bound and uncoordinated, Lelaine liked to demonstrate one-handed balancing. His home contained two gyms and a pool that he used daily. Lelaine summed up his philosophy about good nutrition and exercise. Dying is easy. Living is a pain in the butt. It's like an athletic event. You've got to train for it. You've got to eat right. You've got to exercise. Your health account, your bank account, they're the same thing. The more you put in it, the more you can take out. Exercise is king and nutrition is queen. Together, you have a kingdom. Lelaine often stressed that artificial food additives, drugs, and processed foods contributed to making people mentally and physically ill. The human bloodstream is a river of life which is polluted by junk foods, loaded with preservatives, salt, sugar, and artificial flavorings. Relying on evidence from the President's Council on Physical Fitness, he also agrees that many of our aches and pains come from lack of physical activity. Lelaine was married to his second wife, Elaine Doyle Lelaine, for over five decades. Lelaine died of respiratory failure due to pneumonia at his home on January 23, 2011. He was 96 years old. According to his family, he had been sick for a week but refused to see a doctor. They added that he had been performing his daily two-hour workout routine the day before his death. Just some of the great feats of endurance the legendary Jack O'Lane accomplished. Starting in 1954, at age 40, he swam the entire 8,981-foot length, which is 1.7 miles of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco underwater, with 140 pounds of air tanks and other equipment strapped to his body, a world record. In 1955, at age 41, he swam from Alcatraz Island to Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco while handcuffed. In 1956, at age 42, he set what claimed as a world record at the time of 1,033 push-ups in 23 minutes on You Asked For It, a television program hosted by Art Baker. 
1957, at age 43, he swam the Golden Gate Channel while towing a 2,500-pound cabin cruiser. The swift ocean currents turned this one-mile swim into swimming distance of 6.5 miles. In 1958, at age 44, he maneuvered a paddleboard nonstop from Farallon Islands to San Francisco shore. The 30-mile trip took 9.5 hours. In 1959, at age 45, he did 1,000 jumping jacks, 1,000 chin-ups, all in one hour and 22 minutes, to promote the Jack O'Lane show going nationwide. LaLanne said this was the most difficult of his stunts, but only because the skin on his hands started ripping off during the chin-ups. He felt he couldn't stop because it would be seen as a public failure. In 1974, at age 60, for the second time, he swam from Alcatraz Island to Fisherman's Wharf. Again, he was handcuffed, but this time he was also shackled and towed a thousand-pound boat. In 1976, at age 62, to commemorate the spirit of 76, United States Bicentennial, he swam one mile in Long Beach Harbor. He was handcuffed and shackled, and he towed 13 boats representing the original 13 colonies, containing 76 people. In 1979, at age 65, he towed 65 boats in Lake Ashinoko near Tokyo, Japan. He was handcuffed and shackled, and the boats were filled with 6,500 pounds of Louisiana Pacific wood pulp. In 1980, at age 66, he towed 10 boats in North Miami, Florida. The boats carried 77 people, and he towed them for over one mile in less than one hour. In 1984, at age 70, handcuffed, shackled, and fighting strong winds and currents, he towed 70 rowboats, one with several guests, from the Queensway Bridge in the Long Island Harbor to the Queen Mary, a trip of one mile. On June 10, 2005, then-Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger launched the California Governor's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. In his address, Schwarzenegger paid special tribute to Lillane who he credited with demonstrating the benefits of fitness and a healthy lifestyle for 75 years. In 2008, he inducted LaLanne into the California Hall of Fame and personally gave him an inscribed plaque at a special ceremony. In 2007, LaLanne was awarded the President's Council Lifetime Achievement Award. This award is given to individuals whose careers have greatly contributed to the advancement or promotion of physical activity, fitness, or sports nationwide. Winners are chosen based on the individual's career, the estimated number of lives the individual has touched through his or her work, the legacy of the individual's work, and additional awards or honors received over the course of his or her career. Some other honors and awards Jack LaLanne received during his lifetime was in 1963, he was the founding member of the President's Council on Physical Fitness under President John F. Kennedy. He won an award for President's Council of Physical Fitness Silver Anniversary, Governor's Council on Physical Fitness Lifetime Achievement Award, the Horatio Alger Associated of Distinguished Americans Award, American Academy of Achievement, the American Cancer Society Award, American Heart Association Award, American Medical Association Award, WBBG Pioneer of Fitness Hall of Fame, APFC Pioneer of Fitness Hall of Fame, Patriarch Society of Chiropractors, NFLA Healthy American Fitness Award. He received an award from Oscar Heiderstam Foundation Hall of Fame. 
received the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Gold Circle Award, commemorating over 50 years in the television industry, the Jack Webb Award from the Los Angeles Police Historical Society, Interglobal's International Infomercial Award, the Freddie Medical Media Public Service Award, in 1992, at age 78, the Academy of Bodybuilding and Fitness Award. In 1994, at age 80, the State of California Governor's Council on Physical Fitness Lifetime Achievement Award. In 1996, at age 82, the Dwight D. Eisenhower Fitness Award. In 1999, at age 85, the Spirit of Muscle Beach Award. In 2002, at age 88, a star on the Hollywood Boulevard Walk of Fame. And at his induction ceremony, Jack O'Lane did push-ups on top of his star. In 2005, at age 91, the Jack Webb Award from the Los Angeles Police Department Historical Society. The Arnold Classic Lifetime Achievement Award the Interglobal International Infomercial Award. At age 94 in 2008, he was inducted by Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger into the California Hall of Fame. These are just a few of the awards that Jack Lane received during his lifetime. Lane appeared as himself in the following films and television shows. You Bet Your Life in 1961, Peter Gunn in 1960, The Addams Family, Batman in 1966, Fit and Fun Time, Kids TV Pilot Show in 1972, Repossessed in 1990, Amazing Discoveries in 1991, The Simpsons on Season 10 in 1999, Hollywood's Magical Island, Catalina, in 2003. Mostly True Stories, Urban Legends Revealed, 2004. And Penn and Teller, Season 2, 2004. And the movie The Year Without a Santa Claus, in 2006, playing Hercules. At Jacqueline Celebration of Life Memorial Service in Los Angeles, Many of his friends and family members spoke at his eulogy. His son, John Lalane, talked about how proud he was to have a father that instilled in him the great values of trying to help people at all times live healthier lives and always maintain a positive outlook on life. Fitness experts Richard Simmons and Denise Austin Thank Jack for the knowledge he bestowed on them and the world, which motivated them to follow in his footsteps. The Incredible Hulk and former Mr. Universe, Lou Ferrigno, spoke on growing up in Brooklyn, New York, as a youngster with 80% of his hearing loss. He said watching Jack Lillane's television show helped motivate him to be anything he wanted to be, he was willing to work for it. Lou used that motivation to train with weights and build his body to be stronger. Then California governor and former seven-time Mr. Olympia and actor Arnold Schwarzenegger told the friends in attendance that as an immigrant from Austria to the U.S. in 1968, he used Jack's powerful motivation to help overcome the adversities he faced when building a new life in the United States at the age of 21. He called Jack Lillane a national treasure. Okay, my friends, this concludes part two of my Jack Lillane video on this icon, man, this godfather of fitness, this really decent human being that tried to help everyone in this world live a better life. And uh, he made a great impression on me, as I told you in part one, where I had met Jack a couple of times 
uh, along my travels. And I wrote about Jack in my second book, and I'm going to do a video separate from these tribute videos, uh, just on my three books that I've written. And that will come out very soon, but um, I guess as a little tease, I'll just say, this is my second book called Big Bill Anderson Remembers His Fallen Friends of Wrestling. And this book, I included a chapter on Jack O'Lane because Jack was a professional wrestler in the 1930s. And this book is a tribute book to The Sheik and Big John Studd and Professor Tanaka and Freddie Blassie and Road Warrior Hawk. These were all friends of mine, men that I traveled with, wrestled against, Bruiser Brody, Randy Macho Man Savage, Dick the Bruiser and the Crusher, Andre the Giant, I've been in the ring with him back in the uh, 1980s. Uh, so, I wrote a chapter on Jack Lane, and I uh, felt I owed it to him out of respect for Jack uh, and his accomplishments, and as a teenager, how he motivated, motivated me to be in shape. And I was through the biggest part of my life. And uh, I am a bit embarrassed now to say that I'm not in the shape I was in. I had back surgery uh, back uh, 15 years ago that uh, put quite a damper on uh, my health. And uh, so, not going to bore you with that. But I will put a description on how to order this book if you're interested. Uh, here is the back cover of the book. Uh, fabulous Mula, Dr. Jerry Graham, who I did a video on at Riverside National Cemetery that you just saw um, a few weeks ago, um, was my friend and my manager for quite a while. Uh, Little Tokyo, Don Ross, former Mr. America. So I'll put a description on how to order the book if you're interested in uh, the description for this video. And I want to thank you very much, everyone, um, for becoming subscribers to my channel, for caring enough, taking time out of your busy day to watch my videos. Um, I know we all have busy lives, we have families, or we have jobs. I know I certainly do. It takes up a lot of my time, which has kept me from really doing the videos that I want to do and the volume I want to do and the rate I want to do them in uh, and traveling. So, my friends, thank you. And uh, again, this is Big Bill Anderson saying adios, amigos.